Okay. Well, we've been talking about the Bible. And last week, I mean, last lesson, I'm not going to upload these by weeks. Um, last lesson, I kind of started to rush it there at the end because I was trying to fit it all in there. Um, but I decided instead to just take a break and just upload a, a second part to it. Um, so obviously this, this video is going to be pretty short because I don't have that much m more. Um, so I do want to make a note though, um, I have these little sheets uh, that have fill in the blanks. So if you want, and, and, I po and I'm posting them on my, on my Tumblr, on my blog, um, so if, if you want, you can print those out and then fill them out as we go along and take your notes and everything and have uh, a hard copy. Um, and I, the reason why I did that was so just in case you wanted to teach something like this for um, your church or uh, if you just wanted to put more thought and effort into it. And if you wanted all the scripture references that I have, they're all on these sheets. Um, so you can find that on my blog, which is listed below the video um, if you are on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, go to YouTube and it'll have it listed in the description. Um, so, <clears throat> that, that is pretty amazing that, that both the church council and the leader separately decided on this, this saw the revelation, saw the inspiration of, of the books, uh, you know, uh, together. So, anyways. We already talked about last time about how the extra books were added after the Reformation to establish the Pope's authority. Now, what what they're gonna say, and and don't don't if you're a Protestant, don't start problems with, with the Catholics. They are not your enemy. Okay, not only that, but this is not the the time of the Reformation. We're not killing each other anymore. We can work together. We're the same religion. We're just different denom denominations. But if you are in the Catholic Church, um, you'll know it's uh, it, they teach that these books have always been you know part of the church, and, and that's true to an extent. They just weren't ever seen as scripture. Okay, that does kind of need to be established. Um, so, <clears throat> as far as the other gospels, the missing gospels, you know, we talked about the the other books that, that you know the apocrypha apocryphal books and um, whatnot, and how they're not in, in our Bible. Why not? Um, and, and so that takes us to, well, what about the missing Gospels? Um, so these other Gospels that, that people keep talking about, it, more about this in, in the New Testament class that we've posted, but, or that we are posting at the time of this recording. But um, basically, they were used by small groups of cults. They weren't used by the church as a whole, um, which is actually where the idea of success, uh, successors came uh, from in the uh, church, the idea that the knowledge was handed down and so um, if it was handed down, why didn't Jesus give this information of, of this secret hidden knowledge? Um, so anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, but it, there's more of that in the New, New Testament class, but basically um, they, they were never seen as scripture by, by the church, just by these little cults. Um, so, um, the New Testament books were widely known and accepted. Those that didn't make it weren't. It's pretty much as simple. I mean, there's a little bit more that you could get into, but that's more of a Bible survey class, and we're not going to go there in this class. So there were four tests for the New Testament, and the Old Testament had similar tests. The first was origin. Was it written by an apostle or someone closely related? I'll give you an example here. Luke was not one of the twelve. He followed around Paul. And at some times it looked like, looks like he may have been following some other people around. Uh, but um, he, he was not one of the twelve. And Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark, he was not one of the twelve. You know, um, so um, there, there's, there, there are some exceptions there. But uh, obviously there, the reasons for that is, okay, Mark was said to have taken his Gospel from Peter's account. Uh, Luke had personal eyewitness accounts. Um, so, um, and as far as the Old Testament, um, the test was was written by a prophet, a prophetically gifted person. Um, so, uh, second, acceptance. Was it widely accepted by the church? Was it widely accepted by the church? Um, thir third, agreement. Did it agree with known scripture? And for the Old Testament, this test was, um, d did it agree with, with previous revelation? Um, so, and then inspiration, did it seem inspired? Obviously, all of these are pretty objective except for the last one, inspiration. Um, 
So, so this is some, just some information about the Bible. Um, like I said, this class was really meant for anyone. If you are new to Christianity, let me kind of break some stuff down. Uh, you'll see it written down like this right here where it says Gen 126. And what that means is Genesis, that's the book, chapter 1, verse 26. Okay? This little thing separate this little semicolon here separates chapter from verse. So how it's written down is book or an abbreviation, which basically means a shortened version of the book, chapter of the book, and then verse in that chapter. So um, if you're not sure as to where that book is, um, at the beginning of your Bible it should have an a uh, little table of contents. Look that up. Um, very, very good. Um, or you can get some Bibles have uh, marks on where the books are, but once again it's going to be an abbreviated form, so like instead of Malachi I'll say Mal. So, uh, however, in the original manuscripts, there were no verses and chapters. So when you're reading through the through the Bible, don't separate it when you get to a new verse. Don't separate it when you get to a new chapter. Don't separate the flow. Read it as all part of one unit. Um, in fact, Genesis through Deuteronomy were actually written to be one unit. The Pentateuch. It, it's they, all Genesis should be taken with Exodus. Should be taken with Leviticus. Should be taken with Numbers. Should be taken with Deuteronomy. Um, so, the Old Testament is what's called, all the books that are called from Genesis through Malachi, okay? Um, they were all written before Jesus came. So, um, if you look in your Bible, it'll say Old Testament, that includes all the books from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First uh, and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, and so on and so forth. Uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, uh, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Yeah, th these are the books of the Old Testament, and you'll see it there in your Bible. Um, and and so those books all came before Jesus, and we have an Old Testament class if you're interested more on in that. But basically, it talks about, uh, the Old Testament includes the books of the law, the books of history, the books of wisdom and poetry, uh, the books of prophets, of the prophets. So the New Testament is everything written after Jesus. Okay, it takes all the books in your Bible from Matthew through Revelation, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Um, so the, this includes the Gospels, which are the four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, um, and the letters or the epistles, whatever you want to call them. That's Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, those ones, uh, which are basically letters written to certain either people or churches. And then uh, the book of Revelation. So uh, now there's 400 years between the Old and the New Testament, which is called the Silent Age, 400 years, 400 years of silence. So... Um, as far as what's the purpose of the Old Testament, Galatians 3, 19-29 talks about that if you want to read that. Um, the New Testament fulfills the Old, but the Old still has value. Um, I highly encourage you to watch our Old Testament Made Easy class, our New Testament Made Easy class, and uh, coming up, the um, Understanding the Bible class. It will really help you get a, get a good feel of things. Um, so how can I understand uh, the Bible? First off... Oh, let me read some passages and, and then I'll go to the first off. Romans 15.4 says, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and the encouragement um, of the scriptures we might have hope. And then in 10.13-17 it says, Um... For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in whom in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Um, just as, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. How, however, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord who has believed to our report. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God, of Christ. Um, and we already talked about it being the written uh, word of God. Um, and, I, and I do want to say, point out one thing. Um, the, Bi the, the Old Testament was written in large part as an example to people. Okay, It was written to give clarification. Like, for instance, um, God destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. What do we learn from that story? We learn that he is holy, that he is a judge. But he, that he's the only one who can judge because he's the only one who is perfect. We also understand that he hates sin. He hates it. 
although he's grieved at the person dying, that is a, that is an element that we see that God is lo loving and that he's good. Um, his love demands justice. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah were, were, were mistreating other people. You know, oh, well, that's harsh. They were mistreating other people. They were raping. They, they tried to rape two guys that went into town, which you know were angels, but still, um, they 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 weren't they weren't you know victims or anything. So, in uh, Matthew four four, and that, more of that's in the Bible understanding the Bible classes. Um, at the time of this recording, I'm actually working on a summarization of the Old Testament class, which basically basically goes over things that I didn't talk about very well and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, Matthew um, 4 4 and I, I want to remi remind you of the place in scripture where it says that um, that not not one single um, single stroke of the Old Testament will pass away um, until all things have been fulfilled so Matthew 4 4 but he he answered and said it is written man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God that is where true life is found. Deuteronomy 29, 29. And, you know, sometimes we like to get real scared about science and that kind of stuff. Science is never going to disprove anything because all knowledge, all truth is God's truth. Okay? Just remember that. All truth is God's truth. You can study science. Um, just don't don't settle on uh, – scientists are masters at taking, especially nowadays, at taking something and making a very unscientific claim. 29, 29. Evolution, for instance. I'm not saying whether it happened or didn't happen, but they rush to prove something that may not be accurate, and they're not doing the, the, the scientific study. By scientific study, you should put it in a test tube and observe. However, they're not doing that. They're basing an entire theory and teaching it as fact based off of um, what they believe happened in the past of you know what they take as evidence, but that same evidence could be attributed to many different theories. So rather than teaching it as as a theory that we cannot currently prove, because evolution does not happen still today, at least no, let me let me clarify that, evolution doesn't happen in cross species as it was supposed to have happened. So why aren't pe people adapting into something else? Why aren't we evolving into something else rather than just? Now I'm not saying that that there isn't an adaptation that happens within a species. Um, birds changing colors or something throughout generations. I'm not saying anything like that. What I am saying is um, that uh, we don't see a man turning into anything else. We don't see any more monkeys turning into people. Now, obviously, um, those who, who have studied evolution will say, well, okay, but not everybody and not every evolutionist believes that people came from monkeys. Well, that is true, um, but the same principle applies elsewhere, too. Um, so Deuteronomy 29, 29, um, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our sons forever, that we may observe all the word of the law. Now the problem is, is of this law. Um, now the problem is, the problem is, is that we take something as not revealed, like for instance science, and say, oh, well we can't believe it. Well, you can believe actual science, okay? Um, Obviously, stay away from arbitrary statements, but, um, and then also sometimes we, oh, we have to stand in faith. No, actually, we have a revelation of that. For instance, um, we just have to um, take it by faith that how, how, old the, how old the world is. No, science can show us how old the world is. See what I mean? Now, obviously, it begs the question, but was the world created with age? Was the world created and then God inhabited it? Like and then God created things for it, or was it created and everything was, you know, were they actual days or were they were they, age, were they each of those days ages? You know, so many questions that that begs. But you know, ultimately we can know how long the world has been in existence. Let's just say that. Um, so, um, anyways, continually study. The first step to understanding the Bible is continually study. For those who seek, they will find. And you know, the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible. So who do you think you should go to, um, first off, in prayer, to help you understand? The Holy Spirit. Proverbs 3, 5-7, through 7, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Once again, this is not condoning stupidity. This is condoning faith. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. Um, so, 
uh, meditate, which basically means keep it in your mind. Keep thinking about it. Um, Psalm 1914 um, says, uh, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let the things that I'm thinking about be acceptable to you. Um, third, memorize passages. You know, when we get offended, we, we, we think and think and think about what how we've been wronged. Whereas meditate or memorizing scripture and meditating on it helps us redirect our thoughts. If you're memorizing something, especially if you have a hard time memorizing, you're gonna you're gonna take up your space in your brain on something more beneficial. Um, so memorize uh, passages. Uh, Psalm 119:11 says this: "Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you." So. Um, ask others in the church. Obviously, don't just ask anyone. Ask with discretion, but still ask. Um, ask the pastor. Ask other leaders. Don't ask people who converted from another religion. Don't ask people who are new to the church. These are bad things. Uh, ask those people who um, who uh, would know. So. Also, don't don't ask people who you know are going to affirm your view. Um, I was talking to someone, and, and, and they decided to convert to Mormonism. And so they asked a bunch of Mormons. Well, you're going to obviously get a biased view there. You know, by all means, ask Mormons, fine, go ahead, but ask other people too, and actually have the wisdom to listen. Okay. What we do is we make up our minds and then ask people, and then when they disagree, we write them off. But then if they agree, oh, okay, this person is so wise. So pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand. So uh, I already talked about that. Meet with church regularly, and I, I am referring to you as the church. Meet together uh, regularly. Um, some things are said in, 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 in services that you wouldn't have learned otherwise. Some things come to you during worship. Some things... Um, you know, are given in words that just clarify passages and stuff. Very, very interesting stuff. Um, and one more note about science. Oftentimes it doesn't disprove the Bible. It just clarifies the Bible. Clarifies our bias. But see, what we do is we instantly go to saying, okay, so the Bible is not true. When rather than saying, okay, well, no, the Bible is still true. I just have to understand it differently. Or I have to relook at the evidence. What is the evidence that's against it? Let's relook at it. So... Mm -hmm. Don't use scripture as a weapon. What we like to do also is when we're studying the Bible, we use, oh, this, if only they would read this, if only they would understand. And then, or we're in an argument, oh, well, the Bible says you shouldn't be doing that. Well, yeah, but once again, you're using it as a weapon, which it was not meant to be used. Did you know that the Bible mentions hell only to Christians? Notice how God never gave a revelation to the world. Set type teaching about hell. Yet, what does the church do with the book of Revelation today? It scares people, and they try to scare, and scare people into salvation. Do you know why the book of Revelation was actually given? As an encouragement to the church who was suffering. They looked around and they didn't see the coming of the Lord. They saw th times getting harder. And so, what does God do? He gives the book of Revelation. Which, by the way, the Bible does say that there won't be any more revelation given. Um, like that. And it also says not to believe even if an angel gives it to you. So uh, just treasure that in your heart when you're thinking about stuff like Mormonism and whatnot. Even if an angel itself was to give a different gospel than Paul preached. And um, that's exactly what Mormonism and Jehovah's, Mormonism and Jehovah's Witness does. So everything we believe must be built on Christ and his word. Even if somebody says it from the stage, do not believe it unless it is based on, on the truth of scripture. Um, obviously not all things you're going to be able to, to say that with, like for instance science, but I mean, if it's contradictory to the Bible, you know it's not true. So that takes us to the end of this, end of this lesson. If you have any questions on my YouTube, um, I can only see it if you post it on my YouTube. Go to my YouTube under the video and scroll down, and it'll say I have a comment section. Um, you can comment in there, and if you comment on the YouTube under my original video, I will get it and I'll be able to respond. So uh, next next time we'll be uh, teaching about salvation. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and all these lessons are meant to be taken as circular. You can watch any of them in any, in any order.
Okay, so, um, okay.